It's good to see everybody here this morning. Good to hear everybody talking and getting to visit with everybody this morning. We're going to go ahead and get started with our morning worship service. Glad to see everybody here. Glad to uh, have those that are attending online as well. It's good to see our crowd, you know, coming back together and getting bigger. And It's just good to be together this morning. Good day to worship the Lord. Uh, let's mark number two in your book for our first song this morning. Number two. Let's continue to keep Vera Spencer in our prayers. She had an MRI on Wednesday. Uh, she has an infection in her lower back. Uh, needing more tests, Dell and, Ver and Vera are appreciative of, of our prayers. Let's continue to keep her and Dale. Dale also has some issues with his back, but keep Miss Vera especially in our prayers. Let's continue to keep Carolyn Lloyd's grandson. We've announced this. He is still on life support. Uh, he was in a bad accident. Uh, Joanne says they are still unsure about his condition. Uh, let's continue to keep Zach Shears and uh, the entire family in our prayers. Still collecting water, uh, the jugs of water, the church, so that we can help those in need in our community and the uh, church members here. If you're needing water and you're a church member here, be sure to go by downstairs. There is some water down there. Be sure to grab you some. Let us know if you need it. Reach out to the office. We'll get it to you. If you're not able to come by here and get it, we'd be glad to bring it to you. Uh, if you are here and need it, like I said, it's downstairs. But we are continuing to take water donations. Tomorrow morning, I believe we have a truck coming in from a church in Tennessee, and we need help unloading that. There's uh, a U-Haul bringing a good bit of water down tomorrow morning. I don't have a time. Yeah, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. The truck should be here, so if you can help unload the truck, please show up at 9. There's a Teen Devo tonight following evening services. Teen Youth Retreat, September 9th through 11th at Sardis Lake, Sardis Lake Christian Camp. $25 per person. There's a sign-up sheet on the youth board. Be sure, I know a lot of us don't hit those sign-up sheets and we still... Uh, plan on going, so if you plan on it, be sure to say something to Logan uh, or Kelly, or be sure to put your name on that sheet so they'll be aware of it. Standing in the Gap, September 12th at 6.30. Uh, everyone needs to bring drinks. We're still under the boil water notice, and we'll be for a while, it looks like. Uh, Andy will be speaking at that particular event. Women of the Word, September 19th at 6.30. Mark your calendars for Connect. Congregational Day Retreat here at the building. September 24th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Lunch will be provided for that event. There's a sign-up sheet. Like we said, we, we plan on coming to these, but we don't go to the sign-up sheet, so it's kind of hard to prepare when we're providing lunch if we don't know how many to provide for. Of course, we go ahead and provide enough. That way we know we have those that, that miss that sheet and will be coming anyway. But look at the sheet, sign your name if you plan to attend that event. Uh, there are some shirts available. We need to know by Wednesday, September 7th, uh, if you're going to be wanting a shirt for that event. Those are $12 each. Sorry to announce, but we all are aware Logan and Kelly will be leaving, and uh, we're very appreciative of their time here, and we love them, and we, we know that they'll do good works anywhere they go, but we're having a going-away party um, for them on Sunday night, September 25th, following the evening services. That's Sunday night, September 25th. So let's all plan on showing how much we love them and attending that event for them so they know... How much we do love them. Car care group number one meets tonight. That's Terry Dyer's group and Jim Green. Those are the leaders for that group, so I'm sure they would appreciate if their members would show up and everybody help out with that. Let's continue to keep Jimmy Barr in our prayers. Jimmy reached out to me. He's not doing well. He's struggling with some back issues. He found out he had some kidney stones. 
And uh, there are those of us that know how bad that can be. Not myself. I've never been there. But I have friends and relatives that have those. So I know it's a tough time. He's having tests run on some health issues he's having as well. Let's continue to remember Morgan Allman being baptized this past week. So let's reach out to her and let her know how much we love her and uh, glad that she's now a part of the family. All right. So as we begin our services this morning, let's go to our Father in prayer. Lord, we love you and we are so thankful for this day that we have to be able to come here today and to present our worship to you, Lord, and we're grateful for the church, the church worldwide. We're grateful for the church that meets here at Sidewell Road. We're grateful for the efforts that we have here to be able to go out into our community, to our state, our country, and throughout the world to spread your gospel. And I pray that through our efforts that souls will be saved. We're grateful for the eldership that's here. We're grateful for the men that serve. We ask that you continue to bless us and encourage us and give us wisdom and strength to be sure that the truth is taught in this place. As we oversee the members here, let us look to their needs. Let us reach out to them. Let them know how much we love them. We're grateful for our deacons and the efforts and the services that they render here. And we're Thankful for the efforts that they reach out to our members to try to get everyone involved in the things that are going on here at Sidewell Road. We're thankful for the time we had in our Bible classes this morning. We're thankful for those teachers that prepared themselves so that we can understand and dig deeper into your word and use that to live our lives and to be able to show others in the world as we go into our workplaces and schools that we are different and maybe these doors will be opened and they will reach out to us to wonder what we're doing different and we will have that opportunity to talk with them. We're thankful for each member here today. We're thankful for those that are at home watching us online. We're thankful for you being in our presence. Continue to bless us as we lift up our prayers, our songs, and as we commune together today. Be with those that are presenting the worship service that it will be presented in a way to bring glory and honor to your name. Be with Gary as he presents our message. Continue to be with Derek and Logan and Ed as they work with us here. We ask that you continue to be with those that have been displaced by the floodwaters and that you will continue to watch over them and let us reach out to them any way we can, Lord. We ask that you continue to watch over those who are sick, those who are hurting, those that may be having surgeries, those that may have lost loved ones. We ask that you continue to watch over them. Most of all, we are thankful for Jesus and the sacrifice that he made for our sins. Continue to bless us as we go through the continuation of our service. We love you, and we are thankful for everything you do for us. And it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, church. We'll begin with number two. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse. Number two. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hides my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hides my soul in the cleft of the rock, that shadows the trackless keepeth. He
be reading this morning from uh, Hebrews chapter 8, starting at verse 7, 7 to 13. Hebrews chapter 8, 7 through 13. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion sought for a second. For finding fault with them, he says, Behold, days are coming, says the Lord, when I will effect a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not like the covenant which I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant, and I did not care for them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law into their minds, and I will write them upon their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach everyone his fellow citizen and everyone his neighbor, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to them, to their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. When he said a new covenant, he made the first obsolete. But whatever is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to disappear. If you would, bow your heads with me. Father, we're thankful for this time once again to come together as a body of yours to worship you, Father. My prayer is there that our hearts are where they need to be, Father, as we sing these songs of praise, Father, as we sing about heaven, as we sing about your Son. Father, help our hearts to be together as we lift our voices to each other and build up one another. And Father, help us as we worship you this morning and commune together to think of your son and his death. Father, help us as we listen to your word to realize that these are your words and, and the respect that we need to have for it. Father, we are thankful for this avenue of prayer in which we can lift our concerns to you, Father. Father, I do pray for Ms. Vera as uh, she has had the MRI and her problems, Father, be with the doctors and nurses that take care of her, help her to get better very soon, Father. Father, we do pray for Carol Lloyd's, Carolyn Lloyd's uh, grandson, Zach. And we pray for the doctors that will be attending to him. Father, if it be thy will, help him to come along and regain consciousness. Father, we pray for Jimmy and... The kidney stones that he's going through be with the doctors that are taking care of him and his needs at this time. Father, we know you're the great physician. We just ask that you would bless each of these in the needs that they have. Father, we're always, always thankful about another one that's been added to the body. And Father, we're thankful for Morgan's decision to, to be baptized, Father, and become a part of the body here. Help us to be an encouragement to her, Father and help her as her parents, help her to grow in your admonition, in your ways. Father, again, keep our minds focused as we worship you this morning. Father, help us to open your word and to remember the sacrifice that was made for us, Father. We're thankful for your son. It's hard to read about the things that he went through, Father, and to understand everything. But, Father, certainly we can understand that the love that you and your son had for us, and we're just so grateful for that. So, Father, help keep our minds focused on you today as we continue to worship you. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would like to mark in your hymn books the song of invitation, it will be number 714, 714. Once you have that marked, our next song will be number 507, 507. We're going to sing all four verses and then the chorus. All four verses and then the chorus. If you would, please stand.
Good morning. It is good to be with everybody today. Always good to come together and worship God, uh, which we get to do and enjoy singing together and praying together, partaking of the Lord's Supper together around that table and studying the Word of God uh, together as well. Hope you uh, enjoy that. Uh, if you're visiting with us, we want you to know that you're our honored guest. We're going to do our best to make you feel that way. If you'll give us a few minutes uh, following the dismissal prayer, we'll try to be respectful. Uh, you know, I know some people are still leery of getting close, so we'll, we'll do whatever you allow us to do. Just to want to make sure that, uh, that you know that we, we love and care for you. Uh, this week is a, is a uh, memorable week, especially for a couple uh, he is a former elder here, and she is a, a marvelous, marvelous Christian woman, Terrell, and Virginia Morris will be celebrating their 66th wedding anniversary. We got folks in this audience that don't even, they're not even 66 years old, uh, much less able to be married that long. So uh, uh, we, we want to say, uh, you know, Happy anniversary to them. I think it's on Thursday. Uh, you, might, you might drop them a card. I know they'd appreciate that. Let, let them know that you, you're thinking about them. It was great to see Brother Terrell here a few weeks ago. Uh, and he looked like a kid in a candy store. He was just, he just grinning from ear to ear and going around greeting people and talking. It's a great blessing to, to have him. They're, they're two fine, fine people. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. Maybe nobody else has this, this problem. Uh, but uh, sometimes we forget to take our medicine. Uh, Teresa's got uh, several medicines she has to take. Uh, we, got, we got an alarm set for one of them. Uh, it goes off in the morning and in the evening at the same time, a.m. or p.m., same time. Uh, but other things we forget. We'll be, uh, you know, into a meal. Maybe I already had two or three bites. Maybe I had the whole meal and say, uh oh, we need digestive enzymes. You know, got to have those things. And, uh, and we, f we just forget. Uh, and that's not all we forget. You know, I, uh, I occasionally I, people come to me and they'll say, hey, can you do so and so? And here's my usual response Yes, I can do that. But if you don't send me a text or make a phone call, this conversation never happened. <laughs> because I've got a really good forget her. What about God? What about God's memory? You ever thought about that? You know, the Bible actually talks about God's memory. And there are aspects of it that I think are going to be a little bit surprising. The first one especially, God forgets our sins. God forgets. You heard it read just a few moments ago. Uh, Andy read uh, from uh, the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 8. I got him to read the entire quote there because uh, the writer of Hebrews literally quotes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. And what's happening there is that God is fed up with physical Israel. Uh, he's sending Judah off into captivity and he's, he's not really going to bring back the whole nation anymore. Just a remnant will be saved. But one day, one day, God says, I'm going to set up a new covenant. It's going to be different than that first covenant. And in this covenant, here comes the most important aspect. Verse 12, Hebrews chapter 8. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. You ever have somebody ask you to forgive them and you say you will, but you can't forget? I think we all struggle with that. Hopefully we don't hold it against them. We've forgiven them. We let it go. But it's still in the memory, isn't it? Still that little bit of hurt, a little bit of pain that is there. What a glorious thought that God forgets my sin. Now, 
I am going to tell you right now, before you ask, I don't understand all of that. What does it mean? God forgets my sin. Does it mean he doesn't remember it at all? He has no memory of it. Well, it might mean that. Or does it mean that he never will hold it against you anymore? It might mean that too. Which one is it? You take your choice because the Bible doesn't tell me. I don't have the answer to that. It says he forgets. <clears throat> if he forgets like I forget, then he has no, no recollection of it. That's why he doesn't deal with it, because he has no recollection. And for us in the day of judgment, you couldn't make a better statement. God forgets our sins. Now, this is in a stark contrast to the law of Moses. Under the law of Moses, sins were remembered every year. Turn to Hebrews again, this time chapter 10. We're going to pick up at verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then, would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshipers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. <clears throat> How many years was Israel supposed to commemorate the Day of Atonement? Every year of their ex existence. Every one of them. Over and over and over again. Annually, the priest, the high priest, offered a sacrifice first for his own sins. And then he went in and offered a sacrifice for the sins of the people every year. What's the problem? Is God just vindictive with them? Is that the problem? No. Look at verse 4. Because it explains, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. Now, that may be a little bit difficult for us to grasp, so I'm going to tell you a true story. When Tabitha was a little girl, she put some crayons in her pocket. And Daddy was trying to help Mama, so I did the laundry. I didn't check the pockets. I had a brand new blue shirt that I was just loved. It was, it was a gorgeous color. It was the right material. I was looking for it. only worn it about twice. I was looking forward to wearing it again and again till I wore it out. Pulled it out of the dryer, and it's got orange splotches and yellow splotches and red splotches all over it. I called the resident expert where we were worshiping at the time. Her husband worked for a tire company, and if anybody got stuff in his clothing, he did. She said, go get you some cheap hairspray. And spray it all over that, and then wash it again. It'll come right out. Wrong. <laughs> that shirt became my favorite mow the yard shirt. <laughs> That's what it became. See, I, it didn't go away. It, didn't, it, it was not removed. The problem under the law of Moses is that what they were using to try to, to get the stain of sin out didn't work. It didn't have the power, it didn't have the ability to take that sin out. And for that reason, it, their sins are remembered every year. But now watch the contrast. Sins are removed and forgotten by the blood of Jesus. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28, we read this occasionally. 
when we're about to partake the Lord's Supper, particularly the fruit of the vine, because this is what Jesus said at that time. Listen to him. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Now watch the construction there. For the remission of sins. Very important construction. And let me explain why. Because there are certain religious people that read that same construction, and they say the word for means because of. Because sins are remitted. Now, if that is the case in this construction, and it's identical, I can promise you. If that is the case, then Jesus died because our sins were already remitted, and that tells me God's not a loving God. Jesus begged him, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. If the sins were already remitted, then the cup should have passed. Right? Now you might be thinking, what in the world are you talking about? But what turn to Acts chapter 2? In Acts chapter 2, we come to a critical passage. The people have cried out, men and brethren, what shall we do? They have just realized that they crucified the Son of God. And that God had raised him up, and that he was now seated on the right hand of power in heaven itself. And they want to know, what can we do about it? Peter answered them. What did he say? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. Watch it. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Religious people that believe sins are remitted at the point of belief. And that baptism is just an outward sign of what's already happened inwardly. Must do something with that word for. They translate because of, but the construction is identical. Jesus did not die because our sins were already remitted. He died so that our sins could be remitted. And so if you're here today and you have thought all of your life, ever since your baptism, you have thought, I was saved before I was baptized, I was saved at the point of belief. If you have thought that, and please notice that biblically won't work. It just won't work. Hebrews chapter 9, the, the writer of Hebrews deals with these matters again. Look at him as he picks up in verse 24. And here's what he says. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with him. What's he talking about? He didn't go into the physical tabernacle. That's what he's talking about. Well, where did he go? which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world, but now once at the end of the ages, he's appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. If you're here today with sin in your life, be assured of this, Jesus died for you. And his blood will cleanse you just as surely as it will anybody else. In the book of Romans, the apostle Paul talks about that same matter. Romans chapter 3, beginning verse 24. We usually quote verse 23. Where, where he says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But in verse 24, he goes on to say, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now stop just a minute. Justified, what does that mean? Well, I, I like the old country boy definition. It works real well. Just as if I'd never sinned. That's, that's a good way to put it because that's what it means. So how'd you get there? Well, listen to the next verse, verse 25. Whom God sent forth, we're talking about Jesus, as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, 
that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Now go back and look at the word propitiation there. Because it's a most interesting word. It's not the word that is usually translated propitiation. I'm going to tell you that up front. Instead, this is the word, if you were to look at the Septuagint, the Septuagint is the Greek copy of the Old Testament Scriptures. If you look at the Septuagint, this word in this place, in Romans chapter 3, translated propitiation, it literally is mercy seat. Where did the high priest go on the Day of Atonement? One time every year, and only one time every year. He went into the most holy place where the Ark of the Covenant was, And the mercy seat was there, and he sprinkled blood on the mercy seat, first for his own sins, and then for the sins of the people, and their sins were set aside for another year. The imagery is clear. Jesus went to the cross of Calvary and shed his blood. But he did not take that blood to the tabernacle or to the temple on earth, but instead he ascended to heaven itself, and at the very throne of God, he sprinkled his blood, not so that his sins would be remitted, because he didn't have any, First Peter 2, but so that your sins and my sins could be remitted. And the good news is, if we've done what Peter told us to do, Acts 2.38, God doesn't remember our sins. He forgets them. God's memory. He forgets our sins. But that's not all. God remembers. He remembers our work and labor. Look, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. These Hebrew Christians to whom he's writing are living in very, very difficult times. In fact, they're so intense in the persecution at this particular point in time that these folks evidently were thinking about, you know what, let's just go back under the law of Moses because, hey, we serve the same God. And by the way, that's true, isn't it? They did serve the same God. But the writer's coming along and he's saying, wait a minute, you can't go back. And the reason you can't go back is that God now has a better covenant. Thirteen times in thirteen chapters, the writer uses the word better. Better, better, better. The Christ covenant is better than the covenant God made through the hands of Moses with the people. So, when we become a part of that covenant, what do we do? What did they do? Well, they had a great opportunity. Because people were suffering, they could reach out. They could help them. They could serve them. Would it surprise you to know that we also are saved to serve. Look at Galatians, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. It's going to sound a little bit uh, negative in, in part of it, but listen for the positive because it certainly is there. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. I hope you'll kind of, in your mind, circle that. Serve one another. Because tonight we want to talk more thoroughly about that concept, about that idea. The church as a family is not about me taking care of me. The church as a family is about me taking care of you and you taking care of me. And you can spread that to the whole congregation. I'm I'm just using you and me as an example. 
there. We are saved to serve. Our, we're freed from sin so that we can serve others, particularly our brethren, and lift them up. In Titus chapter 2, verse 14, the Apostle Paul, writing about Jesus, says, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. I think other translations have purified to himself a people for his own possession. I once wrote a sermon about a peculiar people, talking about Christians. Well, there's a sense in, the, in which it was right, but this verse doesn't prove it. <laughs> because the word peculiar in our language, modern language, doesn't fit. Not here. What it means is, he bought us to be his. To be his possession. I don't buy a lawnmower so that my, so that my neighbor can take it and put it in his garage and use it all the time. Now, I'll share it with him. Don't misunderstand me. But it's staying in my garage. It's my mower. You know, if you get the idea. I don't buy an automobile so that somebody else can drive it. It's the only one we've got. If we're going to go anywhere, we've got to have it. See, Jesus bought us as Christians for what purpose? So that we could glorify His name. So that we could work in honor of Him. Later, Titus chapter 3, verse 8, Titus hears Paul write this. This is a faithful saying. These things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These are good and profitable to men. Titus, what are you going to tell those brethren on Crete? So that you can make them better Christians. So that you be sure to maintain good works. Keep doing good. And again, notice this good we're doing is outward directed. It's good for somebody else. It's good to somebody else. It's important that we see that as a part of our work in the church. Now here's the good news. If you do good works, if you labor then you can be assured that God will remember and reward. He forgets our sins, but He remembers our work in His behalf and in His name. Look at Matthew. Matthew chapter 10, verse 42. Jesus makes one of those interesting little quick statements that really we ought to think about more often. Here's what He says. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Sometimes I, I fear that there are members of the church that think I'm unimportant. I can't do much. Jesus says, if you just give a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, I'm going to remember it. It will not be forgotten. Do what you can do. There's the key. Those of us that can do more, we're going to be held responsible for what we could do. Did we do it? Did we not? Very important to consider that. Those that can do less, there's something you can do. What is it? Act upon it. I think about like tonight. Card group's going to meet. This happens to be for week one. Could be any group. Next week will be two, three, four, right down the line. All right? Can, how many in here, don't raise your hand, not asking for that. How many in here cannot, cannot write a card? Mm, I'm not going to say that. I've written a plenty of them when I was trying to court that little blonde-headed girl from Nashville, Tennessee. I wrote a lot of cards and poems and all kind of other stuff, you know, to try to get her attention. Sure, I can write. I'll grant you as I get older and the more I use a computer, the less you can read what I write. But I can write a card. 
Can you? If you can write a card, get in it. Get with it. Be part of it. God's going to pay attention and remember whatever you can do. You say, I'm shut in at home. Hey, we'll send you a pack of cards. Can you mail cards from home? We'll even send you the stamps. Can you do that? Sure you can. We need to quit making excuses and get to work. Because that's what the Lord talks about. It'll be remembered. Matthew 25, verse 40. We're right in the middle of that great parable of the judgment day. And he's talking about the folks on the right hand and all the good that they did. And you know what? They, they don't know when they ever did those good things to the Lord. And so here's, here's what he says to them. And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, Inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. When you or I act in a good way toward other people, it's as if we're acting that way toward Jesus. Maybe that helps me understand a little bit better. In Acts chapter 9, when Jesus tells Saul, you're persecuting me. And Saul could have said, I never do anything to you. But the truth is he had, because he persecuted the body of Christ. And Jesus identifies with them. When we do good, he identifies with the people that we help. We've done good to Him. One more. Probably the most exciting and reassuring passage to me in this subject in all of Scripture is in Revelation chapter 14, when in verse 13, John hears a message. I want you to listen to this message. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Who taught you the gospel? Is that person still living? In my case, I can absolutely say no. No. Not still living. But if I stand here and preach the truth, is that person not in a sense of the word still working through me? The answer is yes. Yes, they are. God's memory is a fascinating thing to look at. Fascinating because He's able to forget our sins. If you're here today burdened with sin, you need to realize God can forget that. He can put it away. You may have more, you may have more trouble forgetting your sin than He does because He's going to forget. But God also remembers. He remembers the good works that you do in His name and He will reward those works. God's memory from my point of view, calls on us, even now, do what's right, so he'll remember it. Why don't you come while we sing?
next song before the Lord's Supper will be number 105. 105. If you are prepared to uh, serve on the Lord's table this morning, you'll be coming down as we sing the song. Number 105. When we meet in sweet Take of this memorial today, and surely his spirit is with us as we partake of it. Let us thank him for the loaf. Our God and our Father in heaven, we thank you for this memorial feast. We thank you for this loaf which you have chosen to represent the sinless body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, as we partake of it and feast with thee, help us to remember what you've done for us and will continue to do for us to cleanse us as we walk in the light. Forgive us our sins and help us to take it in a way that is pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen.
Let us <clears throat> thank the Lord for this cup. Lord, we thank you for this cup, the fruit of the vine, which you have chosen to represent the bloodshed of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're thankful, Father, for our Lord that set the example for us while he was upon this earth, and that he gave his life-giving blood as a sacrifice to cleanse our sin. We're thankful, Father, for this sacrifice and love that you've shown toward us, and we are thankful that as we walk in the light, this blood will continue to cleanse us and keep us pure and righteous in your sight, that we may live with you forever in your eternal kingdom. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. taking the return of offering back to the Lord for what he's given us. Our Father, we thank you for this day and its many blessings. We thank you for all the things that you've done for us spiritually and physically. We're thankful, Father, for our health to be able to perform tasks and the order of economies that you've put in place in the world that our needs might be met. We thank you, Father, for the privilege that we have to return a portion of this blessing to you as a sacrifice and to be used to continue your work upon this earth until the end comes. We thank you for it and we pray that thou will help us to give in a cheerful way in a way that's pleasing in your sight and it'll be used in the way you would have it to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
with us here at Sidewell Road. Like Gary said, if you're visiting with us this morning, we'd really appreciate it if you give us just a minute to uh, reach out to you and uh, speak with you before you get out of here. Remember your handout sheets. Remember those that we need to remember in prayer this week. Gary, that was a great lesson. I'm so grateful we have a God that doesn't remember our sins, and that was really good, and we all should be grateful for that. Let us stand for our closing song and our closing prayer. Closing song will be number B-17. Be in your folders, B-17. all pray. Heavenly Father, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, Lord. Just thank you for all the many blessings you've given us. Lord, again, we thank you for this day and let us see another day that we can worship you in spirit and truth. And we, Lord, we just thank you for being an awesome and a loving God. Lord, we thank you for the family that we have here at Sidewell, Lord, that we continue to build each other up and encourage each other. And again, just being a loving family. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the message that was brought to us this morning, Lord. Just have us uh, receive it with an open heart and just add it to our everyday lives that we can continue to um, be more like your son. Again, we thank you for the leadership here, our ministers here. Lord, we just continue to build them up and give them the strength to do the work that they are doing. Lord, we ask you to uh, be with those that are bereaved, those who are sick, those who are shut in. Lord, just continue to build them up and give them the health they need to give them back uh, to the fold. Lord, we thank you for the um, soul that was added this week. Lord, just continue to be with her. And Lord, just let us be a support to her. And Lord, just continue to uh, show her the love that Christians uh, may give. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. And Lord, as we depart this place, be with us and give us traveling grace. And all these things we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen.